First kisses are a very momentous occasion for every boy and girl. No? Don't believe me? Okay, well, let's look at the statistics. 5% of people got their first kiss to be from a crush. Facts. Another 5% are a random lucky few who are able to get their first kiss taken by a celebrity. And the other 90% of people get their first kiss stolen by their uncle. So this is a very huge moment for everyone in these situations. And don't worry, I'm not talking about any other countries or states because I know they aren't as progressive as the United States is. They don't let a lot of stuff slide. I know that if you just so happen to even be thinking about getting your first kiss from the same sex, mm, they will pack your ass up faster than any Chinese sweatshop worker. So let's get to the part where the story is about me though. This took place when I was a youngin, about maybe 12 years old, 13 because I had a Wii when this happened. And around the time, I had a huge love for Michael Jackson. And I still love the man to this day. He's the GOAT, his music is phenomenal, and there will never be another Michael Jackson. But I mean like back then. I loved him so much that I wish that I was one of those kids at Neverland Ranch, you know? It's just like, <laughs> get out the way, Macaulay Culkin, I want my dick sucked too. I was at my dad's house minding my business, playing my game when someone comes knocking on the door. So I go to open it to see that it was my cousin. My cousin comes through the door and then he goes, oh man, what's up, Ayo, how you doing, man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, where's your dad at? And I sit there and I say, well, uh, cousin, I've been asking myself the same thing for a while now. Damn. He hasn't been back since last week. My dad was never around, even in his own home. That's how bad at being a father he was. The only people that would take care of me and my brother was myself, my brother, and the meth head neighbor down the road. My cousin quickly changes the conversation and he goes, he goes, this isn't the best time to have this conversation. And it's because his father wasn't around either. So I'm like, oh, that's so sad. I ask him, well, why isn't he around? And he goes, he was killed by the meth head neighbor down the road. So then I just completely changed the conversation because I did not see that coming at all. And I ask him what he's doing here. And turns out he's inviting me to his little brother's sleepover because it happens to be his birthday. So I accepted it. But only if I could bring my Wii and my Michael Jackson the Experience game. Go ahead, nigga, I don't care. So I pack my Wii and my Michael Jackson the experience and I get in the car. And as we're driving to my cousin's house, I notice that when we go down the road, I take a gander at the meth head just for good old time's sake. And I'm, I'm shocked. Dad? I killed your cousin's dad in 87. <laughs> this blue mess shit is good. Drive, nigga, drive. I realize we aren't taking the usual route to my cousin's house. Now, in my head, I'm thinking maybe we're going to get food. I mean, it is a birthday party, in fact. And after I get done sweating after all this Michael Jackson, I can finally play the game. What? But then I notice we take a slight left turn. And we turn into the ghetto of the most ghetto neighborhoods I have ever witnessed within my lifetime. Mind you that this takes place in Elkhart, Indiana. That neighborhood make Detroit look like a peaceful Minecraft village. If any place needed some well-known effective gentrification, it was this place. And this place was so ghetto that I had to slap a French Montana sticker on my Wii so niggas wouldn't think about stealing it. Hey, what that little nigga got to call it up? I think that's a weed, cuz. Oh, no, but I see that French Montana on the weed, dog. I don't, I don't think I want it. Yeah, bro, never mind. Do good for now. We stopped at this house to pick up one of my cousin's girlfriends so his sister would have company, too. Two sisters, in fact, around the same age as me, but did not look at it. When I tell you guys that they were dressed like they owed a pimp Damn. named Slickback some money, it was ridiculous. But I'm not gonna draw them the way they were dressed, because these are minors. And if you thought otherwise, you belong at the same end of a golden pump shotgun right next to EDP. Scoot over, sneak over, this nigga likes cuties too. So they get in the car and we head home. Their names were Monique and Shantique, by the way. Shocking, right? And everything runs as smoothly as a birthday party should. We had water gun fights, nerf fights, played some Xbox 360, watched movies and everything. But it was after all the partying, later that night, where things got real. Everyone's all pooped out, tired, and burnt out from all the partying, but no, 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 not me. I still have a date with Michael, and then I can finally play the game. I pop the disc into the Wii, and I play the absolute madness out of these songs. Ghost of Jealousy, They Don't Care About Us, Thriller, Billie Jean, Dirty Diana, Speed Demon. I played it all. While I'm playing, Shantique was the one watching me the whole time. And she was a horrible hype man, by the way. And she just kept staring at me like I'm the one who traded a WNBA player for one of the most deadliest arms Russian dealers of our generation. So I think of it as nothing, you know, and I'm doing my thing and I replay They Don't Care About Us because you know what? I was in a Black Panther mood, okay? For some reason, I just felt as if the injustice and the evil done to blacks was enough. And I'm gonna dance so hard that I just freeze my entire race. So I get to dancing, and when I tell you it was as if Michael Jackson 
himself Damn. had came in okay okay no more metaphors I, I was going crazy though i just wanted to emphasize it so after i'm done i put my whole ao ussy into these dance shantique steps up behind me and taps me on my shoulder tap 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 and she asks me do i want to play Doc. Ooh, I can, yeah, yeah, y'all know, you know. Now, if you were ever a problem child in general, then you know that playing doctor isn't gonna be the only thing getting surgical. Y'all make sure y'all watching after y'all kids, man. And at that time, I didn't know what that was, so I told her no, because when you put two and two together, when you really think about it, it was a doctor that got Michael killed in the first place. This bitch was trying to set me up. She leaves and then she comes back, but she asks what a different game this time. Do you want to play house? Again. No, I do not want to play house. Whatever Shantique was trying to serve at the time, I wasn't eating. The only thing I wanted to do was just play my Wii in peace. She leaves and then she comes back. Tap, tap, tap. And I'm not gonna lie, y'all. This next question she asked me was a doozy. She taps me on my shoulder, right? One last time. And as I turn around, I see her holding a Galaxy Pegasus. A Galaxy Pegasus in her right hand and my cousin's Beyblade Arena in the other. I'm not gonna lie to y'all. She got Damn. my ass. I rushed in my book bag as fast as I could to bring out my Twisted Tempo, my Meteor El Drago, and my Phantom Orion. Now, the reason these things are in my book bag in the first place is because back at school, all my friends would battle each other after lunch in the gym, so you know I had to keep these things on me. So I start to head upstairs, and then I run into my other cousin, and she asks me, why do you have those in your book bag? And I go, does the president leave his security? Hmm? Does a gangster leave his strap at home? Does OJ Simpson live in fear of going to LA because he doesn't want into the real killer? Yes? No, because he did it. So then I rush back upstairs and I open the door and uh, Sean Teague is gone. I check in the closet. No one is there. I look in the bathroom behind the shower. No one is there. And I'm starting to get worried because every time something bad happens around me or my family, for some godforsaken reason, they would always blame me. How am I supposed to keep track of another 12-year-old girl when at the same time I could barely take care of my own siblings? But then I see it in the corner of my eye. I saw something move under a blanket. And my first thought is, damn, this bitch just tricked me into playing hide and seek. So I go to her and rip the covers off. I'm mad because she made me feel stupid. She puts the cover back over herself and she says, are we not going to play Beyblades? And I go, well, what the f type of Beyblades are you playing? And she goes, just get under the cover already. I'm cold. Now, mind you, it's the middle of June. I'll rest my case. She was clearly lying, but I clearly wanted to play Beyblades. This may sound out cap, but I'm telling you, my nigga, this was real. I was so focused on the fact that this random 12 year old girl from the streets with probably six middle school boyfriends and a teacher that's gonna get convicted soon was interested in the game that I love so very much, I was blinded. So I play her silly games, all right? I go under the covers and now we're face to face, but we're separated at the same time because the stadium is in the middle and it's silent. Shanti goes, so do you like three, two, one, let it rip. And before my Beyblade even touches the stadium, she stops it dead in its tracks and looks at me angrily. Y'all may not know, but this is a very big deal. This was no ordinary girl because who the hell stops a damn full speed twisted tempo? These Beyblades were 100% metal. She looks at me and she goes, you're really good at dancing. And I go, oh, well, <laughs> this, I, I, <laughs> This isn't even my final form. Three, two, one, let it rip. And then she does it again. She stops my medio, El Drago. Who is this girl? Jinka himself couldn't even stop El Drago, and she's doing this with her bare hands. This bitch means business. So now I'm like, are we gonna battle or what? And then she says, I like your dancing. And they usually say the third time is the charm. Clearly, this girl is trying to shoot her shot at me. But sadly for her, she is a girl. And girls in general just have zero riz and I have zero intentions on giving up. Here it comes, Twisted Tempo, three, two, one, let it. And all of a sudden, it just goes blank. This girl's face collides with mine in a fashion unlike no other. Some would call this romantic, adorable, and I would call it sexual harassment. But nonetheless, that is how playing a Michael Jackson game got me my first kiss. She gets up, runs downstairs, I go to sleep, my cousin takes me home, and I never saw her again until the next day where I saw her on the news sitting in court because her father apparently has been taking meth and stabbing people. Damn!